this prescription model just seems to be making that market, that black market that we know is being driven by organised crime, uh, bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, yet even with health officials coming out, even with, you know, so much feedback being given to this government and to the health department in Australia that this is not working, we are seeing for the first time ever an increase in youth smoking and, and youth vaping because they are literally on every corner. It is just out of control. Hello, world. Welcome to the Vaping Unplugged podcast. Everything you need to know about vaping and tobacco harm reduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Vaping Unplugged. This is a podcast of the World Vapors Alliance, and I'm Michael, the director of the organizations. On this podcast, we discuss with vaping activists, public health experts, and decision makers worldwide current affairs about tobacco harm reduction and vaping. And today I'm very happy to welcome Liberal Senator from New South Wales, Holly Hughes, with us. She's a member of the parliament since 2019 and established herself as a passionate advocate for rural communities as well as children and families. And in our case, it's especially interesting because she also got elected chair of the Select Committee on Tobacco Harm Reduction in 2020. So welcome, Senator. Thank you for your time and thank you for, for talking to us about the current situation in Australia uh, on harm reduction and vaping. How are you doing? Hi, Michael. Um, maybe to start with, uh, may I ask you to give us a, a general background about yourself and how you stumbled across the, the issue of tobacco harm reduction and vaping in particular? Yes, yeah, so back in 2020, uh, the party that I belonged to was in government and we had a health minister at the time who, without bringing it through our party room, tried to basically ban vaping. And I've got to be honest, I really didn't know much about vaping at all at the time, uh, but I come from a uh, probably what you refer to as more libertarian background that if you're an adult and you want to ingest nicotine and you want to do it through a cigarette, through a gum, through a patch, through a vape, uh, or through a, you know, a, a vape or a spray, however you want to do it, uh, in my mind, you should be able to make that choice yourself as an adult. And so just from uh, someone who doesn't really believe in banning things, uh, I signed a letter with about 27 of my colleagues to the health minister at the time saying that, you know, hey, no, this is not an okay policy. Uh, that led to then us doing the Senate inquiry into tobacco harm reduction. Uh, but through my personal investigation into what vaping actually was, what it meant and uh, what, it, what it could do, uh, I was a very happy, very content social smoker. Uh, and the doctor that I went and saw about tobacco harm reduction who introduced me to some of the vapes and what they were, gave me a sort of a setup to take home with me uh, and uh, accidentally I never had a cigarette again. Uh, so I was an accidental quitter uh, and then became a very big supporter of vaping as a tobacco harm reduction method, particularly for people that had smoked for a really long time uh, because I think as we all know, the fact that it replaces that hand-to-mouth action very easily, uh, it's a really effective tool for people to get off cigarettes that we know have much much greater harm than vaping very interesting it's it's basically the same for me also accidental quitter thanks to vaping i didn't even know what this device was and a friend of mine gave it to me and i just tried it and basically within two weeks was a non-smoker so it seems to work at least yeah. but uh unfortunately the the current political situation in australia seems not to to um to, rec uh, to acknowledge the, the, this fact. Um, maybe before we go into the, the current situation, could you give us for the, especially the international audience, a, a quick overview, how did, how did the, especially the prescription model evolve? Because I assume it didn't come out of nowhere. Well, it, it sort of did in some ways. It, it sort of eventuated or came about via the health minister and you know i have to own up this was my government i was a member of this government but the health minister himself seemed to be on this very big uh, crusade uh, anti-vaping and moving towards this prescription model which just makes no sense uh, it's been completely 
rejected as a model by those that use vaping. Uh, I think it's, it's estimated about 6% of people that vape have a prescription. It hasn't worked at all. Uh, but it's, uh, and we know it's the only place in the world, Australia, that has this prescription model. Uh, yet for some reason, the government of, and we, there's a new government now of the Labor persuasion, and, uh, and they're holding on to it and, in fact, doubling down on it. And how was it before the prescription model was introduced, actually? Was it completely unregulated or was there already some kind of regulation? Well, it appeared to be completely unregulated, but the people that the vape stores, the businesses that were selling vapes were able to sell them, but without nicotine. And this is where we had a personal importation scheme so that you could buy vaping equipment and vaping juices in Australia, but people were importing their own nicotine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, now it's quite clear already that this prescription model um, is not working and, and created a huge black market. So the current government, at least from the outside, it seems like their, their answer to half prohibition is full prohibition, um, which or how do you think would that work then if this doubling down? Um, is there any chance that the current approach makes the situation better, especially with uh, with an eye on the illicit market no and the black market is just getting enormous like it is absolutely unbelievable to see the number of stores that are opening up everywhere that are um you know they're they're, they're franchises some of them they're branded stores uh but their core business is selling these vapes uh that are completely unregulated no one knows where they're coming from No one knows what's in them, uh, being sold with cartoon characters on them and all of these different sort of marketing tools that we're seeing. Uh, yet it, it, this prescription model just seems to be making that market, that black market that we know is being driven by organised crime, uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, yet even with health officials coming out, even with, you know, so much feedback being given to this government and to the health department in Australia that this is not working, we are seeing for the first time ever an increase in youth smoking and, and youth vaping because they are literally on every corner. It is just out of control. Uh, the recommendations that we made in the Tobacco Home Reduction Inquiry was that vape should be made available in the same way that alcohol and cigarettes are, that they should be made uh, legal, they should be regulated, they should be licensed, they should be taxed, uh, and all of these things that go along with a consumer product. Uh, but instead, this government seems intent on trying to seem even more tough on vaping by uh, appearing to want to restrict access. That said, uh, the minister who's gone out on this limb, uh, who then sort of has been a bit hard to find anywhere since he made the announcement, has now said that there's no real date for when any of these reforms are going to take place. Uh, and, of course, part of this was he announced that it was all going to be about border security and stopping these illegal vapes coming into the country. Again, he gave no, ex there was no extra money for Border Force, uh, who've said that they are in no position to stop the stream of these illegal vapes coming into the country. I mean, that that was pretty shocking to me when I read this, that there should be some kind of vape police established. And I'm also wondering, I mean, we can't keep our prisons drug free. How should how should a country be nicotine free? I think that's just an illusion and and um, just impossible to realize. And for, for me, the surprising thing is with Australia, you have your next door neighbor, New Zealand, has a completely different approach. And I can't really figure out where does that come from. It's, it's two countries basically next to each other, but have a complete opposite um, direction when it comes to harm reduction. Is this just the, 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 the people in power or is there also a difference in media, society, attitude towards nicotine in general? What do you think? Look, it's not, a, I don't think, an opposition to nicotine per se. I think there's obviously a strong part of that within the health department itself. But the main concern that you see or you hear when you speak to anyone around vaping is, and I've got teenage children, 
is the access by young people to vape. The, the number of kids that are vaping uh, is astronomical and the access is so easy. Like it is just, you know, if you if you wanted to buy cigarettes or you wanted to buy alcohol as a in Australia, it's really quite difficult because of the strict regulations and licensing around it. There's huge fines if you sell it to people under the age of 18. But this black market in vapes is just being allowed to flourish. And that's where people are concerned. I think when you speak to uh, get to have a conversation with someone about putting in place a regulatory model, most Australians see that as the most sensible way to go. That, you, you know, once you try and start banning things, of course the black market's going to get bigger. And this is just absolutely in your face. There isn't the policing uh, available resources wise to you know put in re to put in force what these legislative requirements are that they're trying to put through any of the the fines or you know I think one of the the suggestions is like a two year jail term I mean it's just it is absolute lunacy Every then when I speak to others in this space I'm like I cannot believe we're still having this conversation three years down the track uh, that this is so hard for people to grasp that. Without a regulated and licensed market, you're just going to allow the black market to continue to grow. But without also having regulation around it and licensing and taxation stream, you're never going to generate the revenue required to actually really stamp out where you could do, uh, you know, those sort of uh, health uh, education programs about why kids should do it, et cetera, et cetera. There just isn't that revenue being generated from it. Yeah, and it's very unfortunate. Politicians avoid to, to admit mistakes. So I think it's hard for, for the, the current health minister to, to change his direction because that would be admitting that the, the previous um, policy measures didn't work. So I think that's why this doubling down comes. So well, is, there, is there any way to, to change that, that vicious circle kind of? I mean, the thing that I find quite strange about this is it was sort of my government that bought this ridiculous pharmacy prescription model in, and I would have thought this gave the new Labor government the cover to actually say, listen, this policy didn't work, we need to adopt something different. But instead of actually doing any proper analysis, instead of actually looking at the evidence of what this policy has done and say, hey, this isn't working, We do have a close neighbour in New Zealand, but we've also got the UK uh, as a model to look to, that there's plenty of international models for us to look at and that they are having huge reductions in their smoking rates. They're also having huge reductions in their youth vaping rates now, uh, that it's no longer as, as sort of as rampant as it was uh, and say, look, that was the former government. We're going to put in place a different position. Uh, and, in fact, the vast majority of people in my party support a regulated license model. So if this new Labor government would have say, okay, we acknowledge it's not working, let's take a new approach, they'd actually get bipartisan support in the most part uh, across both chambers of, of parliament. Yet instead of doing that, they've completely doubled down on uh, what Greg Hunt's policy was with the pharmaceutical model and made it more stringent and banning a lot of the personal importation, banning a lot of the disposable vapes, I mean, somehow or other, this government thinks that they are going to be able to speak to a manufacturer in Wuhan and say, you're selling illegal products, but can you put them in plain packaging? Can you not have characters on them? And can you not send them with particular flavours? Like, it's just lunacy. And, and is all of this just um, a national debate or, or does the, for example, WHO and the FCTC framework also play into all of this or is that out of the, out of the site for, for Australia? Yeah, I, look, I think it's a little bit more uh, nationally focused that it is certainly something that's more in, in, within the country. Uh, and as I said, there is a big focus on the youth vaping side of it. But I think um, from a WHO perspective, it was really interesting uh, when there was starting, we'd, there'd been some pushback. Those of us that are supporters of the regulated model had done some media and then there'd been some health uh, advisors coming up with a much better model to adopt. Uh, 
every single parliamentarian, including myself, got a letter from the current Health Minister, Mark Butler, reminding us of what our obligations were under the WHO, WHO when it came to meeting with tobacco companies. And it seems to me just to frame that what is actually happening, and, and it's certainly ideological if you look at some of the very big anti-vaping proponents in Australia who have been constantly uh, brought into the health department to advise on vaping, and these people are just completely anti. So they don't look at the science in its entirety. They just go, vaping, bad. Vaping is just a new backdoor by big tobacco to get customers. When the reality is, is most vaping companies, most manufacturers, most retailers have actually no links to big tobacco or tobacco companies in any shape or form. So I think there's a real confusion over the messaging and confusion over who is actually driving uh, the vape industry. But the WHO regulations around dealing and meeting with, uh, as a public official, with tobacco companies seems to be where Butler thinks that this uh, this vaping debate lies and, and he couldn't be more wrong. Yeah, I mean, during the, the COP um, negotiations, we see this, this article even extended to regular consumers. So basically... <laughs> In, in, if it would be logic, then every government who owns a tobacco company uh, like China should be excluded as well. But um, it's not following through like this, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and, and, and we see this. Uh, I'm based in Austria, in Vienna, and we see it with the European Union as well. So whenever they want to come up with new uh, regulations, they say, oh, the WHO is recommending this, then they implement it, and then the WHO says, oh, the EU did that, so uh, everyone else should do that. So it's yeah. kind of nitpicking of the more extreme regulation and trying to push it into other countries. And I think that's always the, the danger. And that's why we are always trying to raise awareness within our community as well for, for um, regulatory events in other countries, because at some point it will come back to, to each, one, each one of us um, as well. Um, and maybe as a, as a final question, is there any positive signs coming from, from Australia that this approach might change or... Do we need to wait till it completely fails and then it might be overturned? Or how do you think and, and in what time frame do you think um, it might be a change? Look, certainly this Labor government doesn't have any appetite to adopt uh, a consumer regulated model uh, at all. Uh, so uh, from my perspective, I'm certainly talking to fellow members of my party to to ensure we have a policy going into the next election that better reflects the consumer regulated model that is actually focused on uh, reducing youth vaping but having vaping available as a smoking cessation tool. Uh, but I, I, I have no doubt that this new policy is going to be an abject failure. It's going to be a continuation and worse. Uh, we're seeing, as I said, all these shops just setting up in plain daylight uh, on every corner selling vapes. Where I live uh, on the fringe of the city, you can't walk more than 10 minutes, 10 metres without uh, bumping into a new vape store. So I, I just wonder how bad it's got to get before people realise. But there certainly doesn't seem to be any appetite from this Labor government at the moment to adopt any change at all. So what would then be your your message to consumers? What, what can we do to, to make the situation better in general, but especially in Australia? I think it's important that uh, from a, a political activism side, which, you know, I'm from the conservative side of politics, so activism is not really our, our thing. That sort of tends to sit more with the left. But I do think it's important that people that vape and have used it as a successful smoking cessation tool do make their voices heard and, and are made making it very clear to their local representatives because there has been some research done and polling done that a lot of the people who have used vaping successfully, a lot of adults, uh, there's enough of them in some seats that are marginal with very small margins that if they together and voted for a candidate who supported their right to vape, you could actually see the seat change hands. And, you know, politicians, that's the way to get them to sit up and take note is if you're going to change your vote, make sure you let them know 
uh, if they don't uh, get on board with your issue. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, that's that's obviously um, one of one of our main messages as well. That those personal stories make a big difference, and I think a lot of politicians are still unaware of 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 those uh, stories and personal testimonials. It's not anecdotes anymore. Um, so that's um, very good, and we try to encourage our members to do that worldwide. And with that, I would like to thank you for your time and for joining us today. It was a pleasure and um, we wish you all the best that the situation in Australia hopefully yeah. gets better very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Michael. Bye.